Mummification was not confined to ancient Egypt, as this practice has been documented in various parts of the world. In the 1600s, in the southern region of Sweden, a significant discovery was made involving the preserved body of Bishop Peter Winstrup. Archaeologists gained valuable historical insights when they examined his remains, but an unexpected revelation awaited them when they examined the area between his feet. In Sweden, officials from Lund Cathedral decided to exhume Peter's body with the intention of relocating it to a new resting place. During this process, Researchers took the opportunity to perform X-rays and CT scans on the bishop's remains. To their astonishment, they discovered that Peter had been mummified and laid to rest on a bed of fragrant herbs, including lemon balm, hyssop, juniper, and other aromatic plants. These herbs not only mask the odor of his decaying body, but may have also played a role in preventing decay itself. While the exact mummification process used on Peter remains unclear, experts suspect that he was placed in a cool, well-ventilated room after his death. In life, Peter was a prominent figure, serving as one of the founders of Lund University, which is now ranked among the top 100 schools globally. He was not only a clergyman but also a scientist, theologian, avid collector, and scholar. Peter held the position of bishop from 1638 until his death in 1679. Through the new body scans, researchers uncovered various health issues that afflicted Peter in his lifetime. These included gout, arthritis, gallstones, tuberculosis, and pneumonia. His gallbladder contained several gallstones, which suggested a diet high in fatty foods. His love for sugar had led to the loss of most of his teeth. Furthermore, he had suffered a shoulder injury that would have hindered his ability to perform daily tasks like hair brushing and personal grooming, making his later years challenging. Examining his body allowed researchers to gain a deeper understanding of 17th century Lund society. Even in death, Peter's legacy lives on, serving as a unique medical archive offering insights into the past. The Lund University Historical Museum's director, Per Karsten, referred to Peter as a mini-universe of the 17th century and highlighted how his remains continue to contribute to modern society's understanding of history. After concluding their research, Peter was laid to rest in a new metal coffin. His final resting place is situated behind Lund Cathedral's magnificent medieval astronomical clock, which chimes loudly at the top of every hour. This historical figure and the cathedral are intertwined, both bearing witness to centuries of change. Peter's practicality and vision led to the establishment of Lund University, irrespective of whether the region was under Danish or Swedish rule. Despite his position as a Protestant bishop, Peter's interest in science remained undiminished. He had a deep passion for natural science and advocated for medical education when the college opened. His enduring impact on Lund's history and the broader scientific community continues to be celebrated today. Beyond the bishop himself, there was another mystery associated with his burial. Nestled between Peter's shins lay the remains of a five- or six-month-old human fetus. Initially, it was unclear who the father of this mysterious infant was. Speculation suggested that a servant may have placed the body in the coffin. However, DNA analysis eventually provided unexpected results, linking the fetus to Peter Peterson Winstrup, Peter's only surviving son. Although this revelation resolved the identity of the fetus, it still leaves questions regarding who placed it with the bishop, a common practice in medieval Scandinavia. Maja Kruzwinska, a biologist at the Stockholm Center for Paleogenetics, plans to explore the historical context of such burials and the relationships between adults and children in medieval Scandinavia. The tools available today offer new avenues for understanding these intriguing historical mysteries. A difficult decision was made, one that may not have seemed entirely ethical, but it was done with the hope of securing the unbaptized child's soul a place on the right side of God, as per Per's words. This act, while questionable, was motivated by a desire to ensure the child's spiritual well-being. In the case of Peter and the fetus, their eternal rest will continue behind the resounding cathedral clock. Hopefully, 
the tolling of the bells won't disturb them too much. While researchers found answers to this particular case, there are other incidents that extend beyond Peter and the fetus. Some of these incidents involving the Catholic Church have raised significant controversies that remain unthinkable by modern standards. One such incident took place in the Italian city of Bologna within the Papal States, where the Church carried out the abduction of a child. This move was fiercely defended by the Pope, and it stands as a troubling chapter in history. The story unfolded in the year 1858, when the papal carabinieri police arrived at the doorstep of Solomon Mamolo Mortara and his wife Mariana. The Mortara family in Bologna faced a heart-wrenching ordeal when they discovered that their six-year-old son, Edgardo, had been secretly baptized without their consent. This practice of unconsented baptisms of Jewish children, often by Christian maids, was not uncommon among minority Jewish families. Despite the family's protests, they were powerless to challenge the papal law, which deemed it illegal for a person of a different faith to raise a Christian child. The Holy Office, upon learning of Edgardo's secret baptism, forcibly separated him from his parents, placing him under the church's control. The key figure behind Edgardo's removal was Anna Marisi, a maid who had worked for the Mortera family for six years. She admitted to baptizing the sick baby Edgardo, fearing for his survival. Her confession reached Father Pierre Filetti, the inquisitor of Bologna, who questioned her at the Basilica of St. Dominic. Although she initially confessed, she later regretted her actions. Despite desperate pleas and attempts to seek help, the Mortera family couldn't prevent their son's separation. Pope Pius AX, who had a close bond with Edgardo, supported the decision to raise him within the church. The incident sparked global outrage with protests and calls for Edgardo's return. During a meeting with Rome's Jewish community, Pope Pius AX faced criticism but remained steadfast, asserting himself as Edgardo's spiritual father. Father Pierre Folletti, accused of orchestrating the kidnapping, was eventually acquitted due to Maurice's inconsistent statements. Edgardo Mortera's story symbolizes the clash between modern societal values and the actions of the Catholic Church. Many see it as a disturbing abuse of power tinged with anti-Semitic undertones. The justifications for Edgardo's kidnapping contradicted Christian values, leaving a lasting sense of shame. In retrospect, this tragic episode serves as a stark reminder of the ethical challenges when religious institutions wield authority and the importance of individuals who resist harm committed in the name of faith. Subscribe and press the bell icon for regular updates.